Proponents of intermittent fasting often say that exercising while fasting helps you burn more fat. But does the science actually support that? In today's video, I'm going over scientific studies on how exercising while fasted versus after eating affects your fat oxidation rates, both during and after exercise. And this doesn't only apply to intermittent fasting, it also applies to the general overnight fast we all do just from sleeping. So whether it's better to exercise before breakfast or after eating breakfast. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And today's video is the third installment of our fat oxidation during exercise series, where I've been going over different ways to increase the amount of fat you burn from exercise. And in this video, I'll be telling you about how fat oxidation varies between fasted versus fed exercise, both during and after exercise, as well as some nuances to these effects, like how your performance is affected, how different intensities might change these effects, and also how long you need to fast in order to get the effects I'm about to tell you about. And the studies I'm going over today are meta-analyses that mostly focused on overnight fasts, so the 8 to 12 hour window we typically have between dinner and breakfast. So they were looking at how exercising after being given breakfast versus not being given breakfast affected how much fat people burned. And specifically I will be focusing on cardio or aerobic exercise, so things like walking, jogging, biking, running, all that kind of stuff where you get your heart rate up. And first to go over performance effects of exercising while fasted versus fed, a meta-analysis found that for short duration exercise that lasted for less than an hour, there were actually no performance differences between fasting and eating before exercising. But for long duration exercise that lasted an hour or more, fasting before exercising did hurt performance and did make people feel more exhausted more quickly, unsurprisingly. And for the main results I'll be talking about today regarding fat burning and exercise at different intensities, I will be focusing on a meta-analysis that included 27 studies. So first, when we look across all intensities, so not breaking it down between high intensity versus low intensity exercise, the meta-analysis found that when people exercised after fasting compared to after eating, they burned a little bit more fat, three grams to be precise, which is about 27 calories worth of fat. So that is equivalent to about 0.6 of a percent of a pound of body fat. I do want to note, however, that the 27 calories of fat does not mean that people were burning more calories. It's just that people were burning more calories from fat compared to carbs. And I give some reasons for why we might want to care about fat oxidation separately from calorie burning in the first part of this series. So check that out after this if you haven't already. So what we see from this meta-analysis is that there is a small effect where if you fast before doing your cardio, you do burn a little bit more fat than if you eat before doing your cardio. So it's small, but it is there. But perhaps more importantly, these effects depend on exercise intensity. So when people did low intensity exercise, like walking, you saw this difference with better fat burning during fasting. But when you look at moderate to high intensity exercise, like jogging or running, or most biking, you didn't get any benefit of fasting. So you didn't burn any more fat from fasting than from eating right beforehand for moderate or high intensity exercise. And studies looking directly at this suggest that the benefits of fasting for fat burning come when you are at 60% or less of your VO2 max, which corresponds to about 70 to 75% of your maximum heart rate. And this chart from the National Council on Strength and Fitness shows how different VO2 max levels correspond to maximum heart rate levels and how those map onto different exercise intensities. So based on this chart and the studies we've just talked about, it looks like the only time you will really get a fat burning boost from fasting is when you're doing very slow exercise or slow running, to use their terms. So now we've covered the effects of fasting versus eating on fat burning during exercise, but what about fat burning after exercise? Well, a meta-analysis suggests that Exercising while fasted increases the amount of free fatty acids circulating in your blood after exercising, which does imply that you are burning more fat for the several hour period after exercising when you exercise while fasted. However, it's not yet clear whether these effects depend on exercise intensity. So it could be that it only happens for low intensity or high intensity or across the board. And as for how long you need to fast, it seems like six hours of fasting it might be all you need to get this benefit for fat burning. And before I talk about intermittent fasting specifically, I just want to sum up what we've talked about so far to make it kind of easier to digest. So what these studies suggest is that 
when you fast before exercising and don't eat for about eight to 12 hours prior to doing your exercise, you will burn a little bit more fat as long as you are doing low intensity exercise like walking or really easy jogging. However, if you do higher intensity exercise or even moderate intensity exercise, there isn't a benefit of fasting. And in fact, fasting could hurt your performance if you plan to do longer duration exercise that lasts an hour or more. And it also seems like exercising while fasted increases the amount of fat you burn after exercise, but it's not yet clear if these effects depend on how intense your exercise was. And now for intermittent fasting. If you're a regular viewer, you might be thinking, wait a minute, is intermittent fasting good or bad? Because in the last video I did on intermittent fasting, which is here, I went over a meta-analysis of meta-analyses, also known as an umbrella meta-analysis, that found that intermittent fasting burns muscle, but doesn't really help all that much with burning off a lot of body fat. And the answer to whether intermittent fasting is good or bad is there is no simple answer because things are almost never black and white. And with science, we have nuances. And with the human body, we have nuances. So based on this meta-analysis, it seems like you might burn some more fat compared to carbs during exercise if you fast. But based on the other meta-analyses, it seems like fasting might also burn more muscle along with that. Although I do want to note that today's Fasting doesn't actually refer to intermittent fasting with long windows like 16 hours, but rather we're talking about shorter windows of 8 to 12 hours on average. So it's not clear if you would still get these benefits with longer fasting windows or if they could even be amplified based on these meta-analyses. But what these results do very clearly indicate is that if you like to take a walk in the morning, then it's a good idea to do that walk before breakfast instead of after breakfast. So a tiny little tweak like that could help you burn a little bit more fat from your walk. And if you're interested in learning more about how much walking can burn fat and how to optimize that fat burning from walking, then check out my other video on fat oxidation during walking when you're done with this one. And making this video has been a little extra fun because these meta-analyses have validated a theory I had ages ago that walking before breakfast would be better than walking after breakfast for fat burning. And I mentioned this because I have a theory that was tied into that one way back when that I suspect that if you are eating a high carb, low fat diet, then walking before breakfast might be especially helpful for you because with a high carb, low fat diet, it's very hard to put on body fat because it's hard to turn carbs into fat, which I go over in other videos if you're curious. I've got a whole playlist on that kind of stuff. And so with high carb, low fat, people often eat well above maintenance calories and still can maintain their weight and often lose weight too. And I have a feeling that if you do some walks before breakfast and burn a little bit more fat, that's gonna be especially helpful with high carb, low fat because you're gonna have a harder time replacing that fat that you burned because you're not putting a lot of new fat in the mix. So I suspect that doing some fasted exercise could help burn off a little bit of body fat before you load up on carbs that then keep you at or above maintenance calories for the day and therefore not really burning too much fat while you're all loaded up on carbs. So that's my theory might be worth a try to walk before breakfast if it's something that you would enjoy. And if you are interested in supporting me in making these videos, which is very, very much appreciated, then please head on over to the Patreon or the GoFundMe. At the Patreon, you can find bonus content and the ability to make research requests and see video topics in advance and vote on them and whatnot. Whereas at the GoFundMe, it's more for one-time support. And if you feel like supporting me, I'll be very grateful. And I'm so grateful to all of you who have been supporting me in making these videos. And if you're interested, the links are in the caption below. If you like this video, please like it and share it so other people can get this information. And if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all these studies. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.